Let's, let's invite our market master for the day. Pramod Gubi, the director of institutional sales at Ambit Capital, joins us now. Good morning, Pramod. Good to have you with us uh, at what are very turbulent, troubled times. Uh, the Sensex has just lost 100 as I speak with you. Uh, what's uh, the sense looking like? We have uh, much more to go, 8,000 or the you know 10% cut at 7,950. Are all just lines in the sand at this point? I mean, it's, uh, it all depends on uh, what comes out of the Fed uh, tonight. I think the center of it all is, uh, is expectations of a Fed rate hike. Um, so if, if, if the Fed clarifies its stance uh, that they are indeed looking for a rate cut sometime summer of next year, uh, a rate hike rather, mm. uh, then I guess uh, we'll, there will be continuance of, uh, of the turmoil that we've seen, uh, so which would also mean uh, that even for India, uh, while we've been holding up pretty well through this uh, correction, uh, I think India will join that sort of a slide, at least for the short term. And when things uh, stabilize a lot more and perhaps uh, when the event has come to pass, I guess investors will, will, will take a back seat and, and, and take a look at uh, different economies and see what it means for uh, different economies. And in, India then should stand out well, particularly given where oil is headed. But now, the, uh, given, uh, you know, the... Sorry, no, I just wanted to know what are the yes, chances I mean, uh, that uh, the Fed would be, uh, uh, you know, as hawkish as that and indicate rate hikes uh, after all. Inflation has moved that bit away from their 2% mark. Absolutely. That's what I was getting to. Sorry. That in the first place, uh, Fed may actually reverse its stance or at least sound a lot more dovish uh, tonight, given exactly what you mentioned, that inflationary expectations have come off uh, quite sharply over the last few months, given, given, the, given the commodity sell-off. Uh, that could really be uh, a trigger for a pullback, uh, not just in India, but across uh, emerging markets, both in equities, currencies, and, and bond markets. So for all you know, uh, so this, this might uh, you know, become a lot irrelevant, um, and, and we might see a, a sort of a pullback in the next few days, if, if the Fed indeed sounds dovish. Hmm. Pramod, hi, good morning. Uh, amidst all this global noise, what does the average uh, investor in India do? Because, you know, now you're getting some of these stocks at 10%, 15% cheaper than what they were about uh, a month back. Uh, do you go in and buy good quality names in both frontline and mid-cap stocks? Or do you just wait till this, uh, this global mayhem passes? I mean, ideally, we would like to wait, but timing is something that, uh, that's been the hardest for any investor. Uh, particularly if you're a longer-term investor, I guess uh, you would like to oversee uh, the, the, the short-term issues and any sort of short-term panic that could come in and, and use the opportunity uh, in, the, in the correction in some of the high-quality stocks to buy in and build longer-term positions. But if you do have a short-term view, I guess uh, you'd rather uh, wait for more clarity coming in. Uh, it could come in as early as tonight. Oh yes, of course. Uh, uh, Pramod, uh, what's the view on uh, the interest rate market in India? Do you think this uh, uh, turmoil in global markets has pushed away hopes of a, a rate cut anytime too soon? Um, I think so. I think uh, the RBI has taken the more pragmatic stance uh, in anticipation of this uh, uh, rate hike from the Fed. Um, and, and as a result, uh, the fact that they've held back for so long is actually proving to be the right thing for, uh, for the RBI to have done and the Indian economy in general. Uh, but like I said, it all depends on what the Fed does tonight. If it is stowish, then rate cut hopes are, uh, are back again. But if, if it's less uncertain in terms of uh, the timing, uh, I guess uh, this is the sort of turmoil would require the RBI to hold on for that much longer to be able to fend off any sort of uh, capital outflows mm. uh, and, and hold rates uh, where they are today. Okay, actually okay. it looks like there has been FIR debt selling today as well. Uh, the yields have moved up to 8.02 as we speak and uh, there appears from agencies uh, that uh, uh, PSU banks have sold dollars. I just want to point like out uh, that SpiceJet, there's some update coming in there. The operations uh, have been grounded as oil companies have stopped fuel supply. So this was the inevitable as we were pointing out earlier. So SpiceJet, as you can see, has now stopped operations completely. Yesterday as well, um, not too many flights moved out of Bombay in any case, but now oil companies 
companies have stopped fuel supply. Remember, SpiceJet has about 500 crores of taxes to pay to the government on an immediate basis, about 200 crores to the Airport Authority of India and a similar amount to oil companies as well. And they, they have not been able to do that. So now the uh, airport sources say that SpiceJet operations have been grounded. By the way, just watch the market as well. Now it's starting to sell off quite seriously. The mid-cap index is down more than 1% and this, uh, the Nifty Junior is down 1.5%. That's a true indication of uh, you know the nervousness in the market. And now names like PC Jewelers, etc. are getting completely trashed down about 10 odd percent. Um, uh, Pramod, uh, what, what could the downside for this market look like? Because we haven't had any major correction up until now. Uh, do you think we could uh, be done with about another 5 to 10 percent correction? Or um, it's difficult to ascertain given the way things are moving globally? Absolutely. I mean, uh, at times like this, at times of panic when there is a big uh, risk of uh, situation, it is very difficult to see uh, a bottom to, to the markets. Uh, from a fundamental perspective, we tend to look at valuations as uh, as a support where uh, where we see certain stocks which we always wanted to buy uh, trading at reasonable valuations with a degree of margin of safety to hold on to the short term turmoil and, and, and would like to buy at those times. But otherwise, very difficult to predict the uh, bottom of the markets if this turmoil continues. Okay. You can't say there is a flight to safety, but certainly there is a flight away from beta. The mid-cap stocks uh, fall is now double that of the Sensex and the Nifty. The big indices have fallen about 0.4 apiece, and the mid-caps have fallen one point something uh, at this point in time. So advanced declines are three stocks declining for one stock advancing on the NSE, and on the BSE it is a little over two declining for one advancing, and mid-caps quite clearly are taking uh, the rough end of the stick. Uh, uh, Will, uh, uh, Pramod, nevertheless, where would you look for, uh, uh, you know, the first picks when you pull out your shopping list? Uh, would it be IT? Um, I mean, like I said, without a, a firm view on, uh, you know, where we are headed in terms of currencies, mm. uh, uh, not like to bet on IT generally because of the currency depreciation. Uh, we still look to fundamentals. Uh, I think what we've been saying over the past few few months or mm. so is that we are in the middle, uh, in the early stages of a recovery in India. Uh, the broader economic recovery mm. uh, will see at some stage the industrial recovery pick up, uh, whether it's the middle of uh, next year or towards the end of next year. Mm. To that extent, we would like to be positioned uh, more uh, aligned to the domestic recovery in terms of domestic, domestic cyclical stocks where there is some reform action from the government, uh, where there is some capital expenditure coming through from the government side. Uh, you know, things like uh, power transmission and distribution, some export plays on the manufacturing side, uh, defense, railways, and so on. Um, not so much uh, not so much betting on the currency itself uh, in terms of IT and pharma. Mm. There are uh, high quality names in IT and pharma. If they do correct, they, they become buys. Mm. But otherwise, the strategy will remain aligned to domestic reforms and domestic uh, cyclical recovery. Okay. Uh, well, uh, how are you looking um, at, uh, you know, the negative side of this global turmoil? You said the positive side would be if the Fed sounded dovish today and gave the indication that the rate hike is a little uh, farther away than what the markets are now pricing it. What can be the downside? How ugly or where can the ugliness uh, increase? And clearly, the currency will uh, take a beating first. Uh, on, 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 on the back of that, uh, you'll see some of the uh, importers uh, with exposure to to, to foreign uh, uh, currency take the beating first. Mm. And, and like I said, as, as a corollary, uh, some of the exporters could, could, could benefit. Uh, but overall, from the Indian market perspective, uh, my sense is this is going to be short-lived. Mm. At some stage, uh, once the panic settles down, uh, investors will sit back and, and look at uh, which, are the, which are the markets which are different in terms of dynamics, uh, in terms of exposure to the Fed rate hike. And, uh, and given the sort of commodity sell-off, which has been the biggest global positive for uh, India, mm. India should stand out alongside sort of uh, uh, reforms and, and the work that we've seen from the new government.
Um, from the mid-cap space, uh, uh, Pramod, we have a lot of, you know, these good quality businesses that are starting to fall now, uh, whether it's auto ancillaries like um, uh, Bharat Forge, auto companies like Ashok Leyland, etc. Um, given that the cycle is turning, at least domestically, would you buy or would you accumulate these uh, stocks on a dip or do you think that one should still wait it out given that there's, you know, quite a bit of carnage in the mid-caps in the last couple of days? Right. Well, look, I wouldn't like to uh, talk about specific stocks, sure. but broadly our strategy remains uh, remains the fact that uh, we would like to buy uh, into high-quality companies, particularly those uh, where you know, valuations were getting a bit uncomfortable. If we see a correction of 15 to 20 percent, allowing us to see that margin of safety, uh, it is the right time to buy, provided you have that holding power for the longer term. If you have that horizon, uh, I guess not to really back yourself on timing and just buy when you see that price point. With a shorter term view, you might want to hold back a bit to see where the, when, when the panic actually settles down. Mm. Uh, but for longer term investors, this is actually a buying opportunity. Uh, actually, Pramod, what is your view on the Indian currency? And I'm not asking you with respect to IT pharma stocks, which you have made clear your views on. But uh, are you seeing the currency depreciate a goodish bit? Because I think now the turmoil in stocks like Bharti uh, is reflecting that the market is worried about their FX positions, FX loan positions. Uh, many of them uh, in the last uh, 12 months, given the general stability in the currency, may have not hedged uh, many of their positions. Uh, and I think that is also biting into stocks like SBI. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're in turn, their exposure to some of the big borrowers who could have FX exposures. Uh, would that be one source of avoiding stocks? What's the view on the currency first? Right. I mean, in terms of the view on the currency, look, based on all fundamental parameters, the currency is in a reasonably good position relative to most other emerging markets. Uh, be it the current account deficit and the balance of payment in general, uh, be it improving growth, uh, be it uh, cooling down of inflation, or indeed our own uh, forex reserve position. Uh, we don't see any reason based on fundamentals that the currency should depreciate meaningfully uh, beyond a point uh, where uh, if we see the Fed rate high coming through and we see a lot of correction in other emerging market currencies and we get into a situation where uh, we get into competitive devaluation by uh, other emerging market economies, then, then, then I guess uh, there is a case for the RBI also to support some sort of depreciation to allow uh, uh, competitiveness for our exporters. Uh, but beyond that, fundamentally, we, we don't think uh, the currency should move significantly from where it is now. Um, and, and, and given that, uh, you're absolutely right. In, in the case of uh, significant depreciation, uh, we have seen significant uh, dollar-denominated uh, debt raising by Indian companies in the last six months. Mm. Those companies uh, should start to see some issues creeping in because uh, the debt servicing capabilities uh, will be impacted quite severely. Mm. Uh, but outside of that, our base case view is the currency should remain largely stable outside of this panic situation. All right, Pramod, we leave it at that. Uh, we hope this panic situation doesn't continue, but for now, the market's under quite a bit of pressure.